Winad Kosla has been a prominent figure in Silicon Valley for many years, making remarkable investments and often foreseeing the future better than most. A few days ago, Winad shared a tweet thread containing a series of slides, which seemed to be part of a TED Talk. In this presentation, he stated, entrepreneurs with a passion for a vision invent the future they want. These are my predictions for an abundant, awesome technology-based tomorrow from 2035 through 2049, if we allow it to happen. So first, why should you pay attention to Wenad Kosla? Who is he? Wenad Kosla, who established Kosla Ventures. Let's take a look at some of the investments Kosla Ventures has made over the past 20 years. These include Okta, currently valued at $27 billion, Ring Central at $23 billion, GitLab, a popular enterprise alternative to GitHub Color Genomics, Academia.edu Door Dash, a significant public company, Impossible Foods, Instacart, Open Door, Square, and Stripe. These are all massive companies that Kosla Ventures placed early bets on. The renowned Silicon Valley venture capital firm has released 12 remarkable forecasts for the future. And that's our topic for discussion today. Winod is highly optimistic about these predictions, and I think that's intentional. While I tend to be very optimistic about the future of technology, I'm also aware of the potential downsides. So as we go through these slides, remember that I'm an optimist. It's completely fine to be a pessimist too as we discuss these topics, because it's important for someone to consider that perspective. Number one expertise will be near free. We will be capable of having near free AI doctors for every person and AI tutors for every child 24 by seven. I believe this is probably the most plausible prediction he has made. In fact, I think the scope he's describing here is actually much smaller than what could truly be possible. He suggests that expertise will be nearly free and we're almost there. We are on the brink of witnessing this with large language models and artificial intelligence in general. It's truly incredible to think about how we have managed to package vast amounts of knowledge into files just a few gigabytes in size. While it's not exactly the entirety of human knowledge, it's quite close. This means that any type of knowledge work could soon be replaced or at least significantly augmented by large language models. The potential for these technologies to complement human efforts in various fields is immense and likely to be realized very soon. So he's discussing the potential of offering free AI doctors and tutors available 24 slash seven to every child. These are just a couple of examples the possibilities extend to software engineers, marketing professionals, creatives and beyond. So the question arises what happens when expertise becomes almost free. Firstly, it provides universal access to cutting edge expertise across virtually every field. On the flip side, there's the question of what becomes of the human experts. I believe there will still be a need for the very forefront of knowledge and expertise, the bleeding edge of discovery. I'm not convinced that large language models are close to discovering new knowledge, but I'm open to being proven wrong. If such expertise becomes readily available for free, it could lead to a world where individuals are able to tackle complex problems independently issues they would normally need an expert's help to resolve. It's intriguing to think about this shift. Just a few years ago, the common belief was that blue-collar workers would be the first replaced by artificial intelligence, automation, and robotics. However, it turns out that thought workers, people who code, create, or perform other intellectual tasks were actually more vulnerable to being substituted early on. Now, it appears that having hands-on skills is increasingly valuable and will likely remain so for the foreseeable future, despite the advances in AI and robotics. Doing simple tasks remains a significant challenge for robots. For example, Elon Musk has often discussed automating his factories. He once mentioned that he overestimated the potential for automation because tasks that are straightforward for humans, like connecting two wires, can be extremely difficult for robots. It's one of those areas where humans are significantly superior and require far less time to learn compared to robots. I do believe that eventually robots will bridge this gap between human capabilities and their current limitations. However, for now, it seems robots will continue to struggle with simple tasks. This is my first prediction. 
All right, number two, and this one's really exciting, labor will be near free. We will have a billion bipedal and other robots freeing humans from the servitude of undesirable jobs. And so this is one that I'm really enthusiastic about this idea, but I'm not very optimistic about its short-term prospects. He's discussing a time frame of the next 10 to 25 years, perhaps only towards the very end of that period. A billion bipedal robots within the next decade. I doubt that will happen. Now, what impact will it have on the economy if suddenly a billion workers are available to work without pay? First, productivity would soar tremendously. This surge in productivity could potentially address many of our significant economic challenges. In the U.S., we are facing an escalating debt crisis to the extent that the interest payments on this debt will soon surpass all other types of expenses. It's astonishing to consider and presents a massive problem that is rapidly approaching and seems insurmountable. So one potential solution is to significantly boost productivity, and this could be the method to achieve that. However, on the flip side, if there are a billion workers ready to work around the clock for free, it could suddenly result in widespread job losses. Previously, I mentioned that the idea of robots performing even basic tasks remains somewhat far-fetched. The reality that humans can easily connect two wires while a robot struggles with the same task is quite indicative of our expectations for robot capabilities in the near to midterm future. So with this surge in productivity and many people potentially out of work, the question arises, what will these individuals do? Finding purpose is crucial as a job often provides a sense of identity for many. But what will be their new roles? I'm still exploring ideas on this and don't have clear answers yet. Please share your thoughts in the comments. This topic seems quite intriguing. Next, something that I've thought quite a bit about number three computer use will grow expansively. There will be a billion plus programmers, all programming in human language, dramatically increasing the scope of computers. Computers will adapt to humans, not humans to computers. I have many thoughts on this topic. Initially, we might see over a billion programmers all coding in natural language. That's the short to midterm forecast. However, in the long run, there may not be a need for programmers at all. The future could simply involve humans interacting with AI using natural language, with the AI directly processing and executing tasks. At that stage, we won't need an intermediate layer of software. So we expect a significant increase in programmers over the next five to eight years followed by a sudden drop in demand. As for the final point, computers will adapt to humans, not humans to computers. I'm not completely certain of its meaning, but I have several ideas. Firstly, programming today closely resembles natural language because humans struggle with coding it must be intuitive because we can't manage these concepts in any other format. However, as AI increasingly handles the creation of code, the appearance of programming might not need to stay the same as it is now. It's possible that future programming could become so unfamiliar that humans can't understand it. AI might develop a symbolic language that's much more compact than our current programming languages, but resembles an alien script. If AI finds a highly efficient way to program that is foreign to humans, there's no reason for it to adhere to natural language formats. It, now, there might need to be a translation layer so humans can comprehend what's happening, but this would be separate from the core programming language itself. While I strongly believe we'll see a surge in the number of programmers reaching a billion, I don't see that as the final outcome. But ultimately, the end game is likely to be a scenario with no programmers at all. Next, number four, AI will play a large role in entertainment and design. Music and entertainment will be plentiful and personalized for you and your mood. Diversity of content and creativity will increase. The celebrity-fan relationship won't change. Indeed, there's a lot to consider here. Essentially, we're moving toward a scenario where content is individually tailored and dynamically created in real time. There won't be pre-rendered content anymore. Instead, you'll either describe what you want to experience or AI will anticipate your preferences. It will then instantly generate and deliver the content, be it a video game, TV show, or movie customized specifically for you, serving an audience of one. But now it is indeed challenging to predict how the celebrity fan relationship will evolve, especially in a future dominated by AI-generated content. 
if all entertainment is crafted by AI and personalities themselves are AI creations, it could lead to a scenario where everyone has their own personalized celebrity. This makes the traditional dynamics of celebrity and fan relationships uncertain and hard to envision. It's not about agreeing or disagreeing, it's more about the difficulty in visualizing this particular aspect of the future. Next, internet access will be mostly by agents. Most consumer access of the internet will be agents acting for consumers doing tasks and fending off marketers and bots. Tens of billions of agents on the internet will be normal. I fully concur with this. Just a few months back, Yan LeCun discussed similar points during his interview with Lex Friedman. When questioned about how humans could defend themselves against misinformation, disinformation, and various scams propagated by artificial intelligence. LeCun suggested that individuals would employ their own AI as a personal filter for incoming information. This echoes Winod's viewpoint that agents will act on our behalf sifting through and managing the data we receive from the internet. That's indeed a double-edged sword. It's concerning to think about how one can ensure their AI isn't delivering biased information. This presents a significant challenge that needs addressing and open source could be a substantial aid. If all models and algorithms were open source, it would allow everyone to inspect and understand their workings. However, there's a potential future where programming languages evolve to a point where they're almost unreadable to the average person. In such a scenario, understanding what's happening under the hood could become incredibly challenging. So these conflicting thoughts are still something I'm working through, but I strongly believe that agents will serve as our primary line of defense and gateway to the internet. The rabbit device illustrates this future concept well. You instruct the agent to perform a task it executes and returns with the outcome whether the task was completed, the problem was solved, or it retrieved the necessary information. Thus, you interact with the internet indirectly through your agent. Now, this doesn't imply we'll be entirely oblivious to the vast content online, but consider the sheer volume of information that artificial intelligence will generate daily true or false, scam or legitimate. It will be overwhelming for any individual to manually filter through. That's why AI is crucial as a mediator between us and the internet. Essentially, whatever AI presents us will shape our perception of the internet. I realize this is a somewhat controversial viewpoint, so I'm eager to hear your thoughts. Please share your opinions in the comments, I'll be reading them. Next, number six, from the practice to the science of medicine, we will be capable of providing precision care based on patient omics, as well as AI models for each individual enabling simulation of each body for therapeutics, dosages, etc. This is a topic I haven't considered extensively, so my thoughts are limited, but it's definitely intriguing. The idea aligns with the concept of content for one, science for one, care for one. This personalized approach seems to be the direction we're heading, largely because experts such as doctors are a limiting factor today. If every individual in the world had a dedicated team of doctors, we could indeed realize the future state being described. Such teams would conduct research tailored specifically to each person's unique health profile, analyzing their DNA, body, and overall health. This personalized approach would operate around the clock, continually researching and devising strategies to enhance individual health. This scenario would represent a significant leap in personalized medicine, allowing for unprecedented levels of healthcare customization. That's completely understandable. It's exciting to consider such innovative concepts, especially when they're still new to us. It sounds like you've been deeply focused on AI-related topics recently, which can make it challenging to dive into different areas like this one. As you continue to explore and think more about these ideas, you'll likely develop more insights and thoughts on how such personalization could impact our lives. So number seven, we will have new food and fertilizers. We will have much better alternate protein production to replace traditional animal protein. So whether it's synthetic proteins, plant-based proteins, or even insects which are popular in other countries but not so much in the U.S., I think they're beginning to gain traction. I've noticed several pitches for cricket bars on shows like Shark Tank, for example. However, it remains a significant mental challenge for many Americans to embrace, 
though their flavor could eventually surpass that of traditional beef. So I'm not sure I've never had synthetic meat that actually tasted like real meat. I do enjoy the taste of synthetic meat, like Impossible Burgers, but it's clear they don't taste like meat and aren't as satisfying as real meat. However, they have a unique flavor that's quite interesting, although they are quite salty, so they're not the best choice for me. But given the environmental impact of meat production, I'm certainly open to trying, or at least supplementing my diet with, other potential protein sources. I Number eight, cars could be displaced in cities. We could replace majority of cars in cities with personal autonomous transit as on-demand affordable public transit increasing street throughput dramatically. I truly believe in this and come August 8th this year, Tesla is set to unveil their robo-taxi concept. It's definitely going to happen as autonomous driving improves. As we tackle that last 10 to 20% of challenges in autonomous driving, we'll see that vehicles can be used much more efficiently than they are today. It's quite astonishing to think that, on average, a vehicle is idle 90 to 95% of the day, just sitting there doing nothing. I would love the idea of being dropped off somewhere and having my car go off to do something else. Then I'd only pay a fraction of the total cost of the car. Indeed, I envision a promising future beginning in busy cities where shared autonomous vehicles are becoming increasingly popular. We're already seeing some adoption, and there are a few other cities where they're operating. This could lead to an exciting future that helps to alleviate congestion in our overcrowded infrastructure. Next, number nine, flying will be faster. We will have Mach 5 planes that get us from New York City to London in 90 minutes on sustainable aviation fuel making the world closer. This is a topic I'm not very familiar with, but it sounds fascinating. We had the Concorde decades ago, but it was retired due to the immense fuel costs, making it economically unfeasible. Since then, innovation in aviation has largely stalled for decades. It's true that planes today fly slower than they did decades ago, primarily due to high fuel costs. If advancements could allow us to travel faster, that would be wonderful. It would make the world feel more connected and I'd love to get places quicker. I really dislike flying and it's a major reason I try to limit my travel. If these improvements were possible, I would fully support them, although I must admit I'm not very knowledgeable about this subject. Next, there will be clean dispatch able electric power by 2050 fusion boilers will retrofit and replace coal and natural gas boilers, reducing the need to build whole new fusion plants, super hot geothermal is also a real alternative. But if that turns out to be accurate, I would be quite pleased. It seems there will be a significant demand for copious amounts of electricity due to artificial intelligence. AI requires extensive processing power to function, which in turn relies on electricity. Thus, I believe we are likely to witness the emergence of massive data centers and supercomputers accompanied by modular nuclear energy plants nearby to meet their power needs. So it seems we'll be observing these modular plants alongside server farms across the nation and globally. While I'm not entirely sure about fusion boilers, though they sound intriguing, I'm aware, there's a growing and substantial demand for vast amounts of electricity that continues to accelerate today. Next, resources will be plentiful. We will discover more natural resources than we consume and prove resource doomers wrong on lithium cobalt copper. I'm not familiar with the science behind this prediction, but it sounds promising, and I hope it comes to fruition. However, this might be the one I'm most skeptical about, because if it were feasible, why haven't we discovered it yet? If we do find a way, it will likely involve a new extraction technique which typically comes with its own set of side effects. I'm not an expert on this topic either, but it does sound intriguing. I'd be excited to see it happen. The other metals used in batteries will become increasingly important, whether for electric vehicles or modular energy storage systems. All these components are crucial for advancing towards a more renewable energy future. Next and last, carbon will have solutions if we have time. Carbon emissions could be a smaller issue because entrepreneurs will develop and scale better technologies for cement, steel, agriculture, transportation, power production, de-acid, etc. This does sound promising. I have faith in it, 
because it's evident that technology can address such issues. I've heard of technologies that can extract carbon directly from the atmosphere. Additionally, there are emerging innovations in sectors like cement, steel, and agriculture. Although the shift to electric vehicles brings its own challenges, I'm hopeful these will be resolved too. This perspective aligns well if you're a techno-optimist, which I am and believe in. This statement acknowledges potential delays in the fulfillment of these predictions. It's not that they won't happen, but rather that they might take longer to materialize due to unforeseen factors that could slow down progress. So one incumbent resistance regulatory capture and so on, so obviously if incumbents resist it and they prevent it through any means, it's going to take more time. Politicians capitalizing on fear for personal populist gain, this is very much aligned with incumbent resistance because they can work together to, to essentially delay or stop completely these technologies. Tech failures or delays, this is going to happen. We're going to see failure, so I don't know why he's listed this as something that will slow down progress. This should be baked into the original predictions. Financial market conditions may kill a good idea very true. Anti-tech sentiment, we're seeing more and more of that. I hope everybody is a techno-optimist, but I'm an optimist, so of course that's what I think. Luddites hijacking the would-be advocate. A few bad AI-related outcomes that get sensationalized, this one is interesting. If we see a few bad outcomes, all of a sudden politicians are going to try to regulate it to death. And we're already kind of seeing that in other countries, not the U.S. quite yet, but uh, yeah, that can definitely happen. Left field events, basically black swan events, yes, that could also happen. And then instigators, entrepreneurs may not show up to make it happen. I don't believe these delays will hold us back. I'm very optimistic about the entrepreneurial spirit prevalent, not only in the U.S., but globally. As an entrepreneur myself, I appreciate this culture and encourage everyone to pursue their interests. If something truly captivates you, see if you can turn it into something valuable. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.